Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. The YouTube channel has just passed 12,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I would love to hit 20,000 this year. It would be so amazing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, there's really no reason not to subscribe if you enjoy the videos that I put out and want to keep up to date with all of them and learn all of the best tips and tricks for Reaper. I want to thank everyone that is already a subscriber, everyone that has liked and shared and commented on my videos. Thank you guys so much. I also want to thank my patrons. You guys help keep the site running. You help me pay for little equipment upgrades here and there like lights and uh, field recorders, uh, things that improve the quality of these videos and things going forward. If you'd like to help out too, you can go to patreon.com slash the reaper blog. If you have a spare two to ten dollars a month, uh, if you'd like to put it towards a good cause, the reaper blog will happily take your money. Honestly, it really, really helps. Please consider being a patron. Before we get into the Q&A, I want to address something that I said in the last video, which was kind of dumb. Uh, these videos are just a lot of stress for me. They're supposed to be fun and I worry about how they look. I don't really get better at making them. Okay, so now let's look at my very first video where I'm talking to the camera. This was at 800 subscribers just before the first Q&A video. Um, yeah, let's see the progress. Hey guys, this is John from the Reaper blog. In this video, I wanna thank you for subscribing to the channel. In the past year, we've had about 600 subscribers. We're currently at 800. So there's a huge difference and it's, it's honestly the same camera. The equipment doesn't matter, the experience matters, and the way that I talk is so much more confident now than it was back then. It's still weird talking to the camera, I'm still getting used to that. I still have no idea what I'm going to say before I say it, and it's a ton of editing to do after the fact just because it's a mess. But I am getting better, and the same thing applies to music, writing music, mixing, mastering, you're going to get better every time you do it. You may still have off days where it's not quite up to par, but if you look back at your old stuff from a year ago, 10 years ago, you've made huge progress. And uh, just try to keep that in perspective. Look back occasionally and see how far you've come. The first question comes from Patrick. Why is this recorded in such a high resolution if you only use a quarter of the screen? I can't watch this on my phone and learn. Well. There's a lot of people that have monitors that are larger than a four inch uh, phone screen. And I make the videos for them. The majority of my viewers are on computers and they have at least a 1080p screen. They can watch my videos uh, in full quality. They'll see everything clearly. That's not to say that I don't put in some effort to make sure it's clear on all platforms. A lot of time spent in editing is considering how far to zoom things and to follow the movement. Um, I'm still forgetting a lot of times and pointing with the mouse and, and that's not ideal. It's something I'm working on. If I change my resolution to 1080p and then record the video, everything looks blurry on my screen. It's only going to get worse as it goes to YouTube. By starting at 1440p, everything's clear, it looks exactly how I'm used to when I'm working with Reaper. The best way to watch the Reaper blog videos is on a computer screen and you can pause it, go to Reaper, try it out for yourself. I always call out the actions that I'm using or describe where I'm going to find a function. Whether you're looking at it or not, it should be clear, but always try everything that I talk about on your own system so that you actually learn it. Because if you just watch it, you're going to forget. Actually put it into practice and you will learn it. See what I do, try it out for yourself. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's the only way you're going to learn um, the best way to do things. The next question comes from Jesper. What techniques do you use to fuel your creative spark? I feel like we talk too much about using the right compressor while all that really matters is writing great songs. Well, I don't really write songs. I, I make sounds that are in a musical structure, I suppose. I don't consider it so what I do songwriting. Mostly I'm making demo projects for um, for these videos and you know, I'll write something really quick just to kind of get an idea out, but I don't really consider it songs I, because I don't write lyrics. I don't start with a melody and 
you know, I, I'm not in a band or anything like that. Instead of what inspires me to write a song, I'm gonna say what inspires me to sit down at the DAW and make music. There are a few things. I like to see people that are uh, musically skilled and just showing off their techniques. People like Andrew Huang. His YouTube channel is a big source of inspiration. He's always doing something cool with music. He's really talented and so fun to watch. There's also a YouTube channel called Fact Magazine and they do a series of videos called Against the Clock and various artists get 10 minutes to make a song. And it's really cool to see their process um, and sometimes they fail, but it's, it's a really cool series of videos to watch. And there's, there's a, probably a hundred or more of those. So really cool series. And then there's also things like challenges. So what if you only used one synth for writing a song for all the instruments? How far can you go with that idea? Um, things like that are pretty inspiring. Maybe you don't get anything useful out of it, but it's a technique and it gets your brain going and it's still practice, you're still learning as you're going. Maybe you only get like a reverb preset uh, out of that experiment, but that's something you can use again and it's something that will help you in the long run. Sometimes it's, it's just the process of getting bad music out before the good stuff can come out. Another thing that inspires me to make music is buying gear. Every time I buy a guitar pedal or a plug-in, it kind of reignites the fire. I want to uh, make music at least for a couple of days. So it's not the best way of doing it. Really the best way is to just make it a routine, make music every day. You know, if you only have half an hour, try to make something. For me and a lot of people, the process is the interesting part, not necessarily finishing projects, just making music and, you know, it's a creative outlet. You don't necessarily have to make it a product. You can just do it to keep your brain alive. Next question comes from I, My, Me, Jubilee. Do you think Reaper will ever get a channel or sample rack like FL Studio, Ableton, and Bitwig? I don't think we're gonna see that. Um, we can kind of get something similar to that by using uh, Resample-Matic and using some of the new scripts that make it a little easier to use. Drop in a sample, click a button, the sampler opens up with that sample in there and you're good to go. But overall, I don't think we're going to see um, like a dedicated sampler track or any big improvements to the sampler itself. My personal opinion is that Reaper doesn't need to be everything. It doesn't need to do everything that every other DAW does. It's, it's just different, right? You can still buy Ableton and use its sampler. I think in general, don't hold your breath for a Reaper feature. It's probably not going to come, but in the meantime, enjoy what it does have. There's so many possibilities already, so many things that you probably don't even know about. Um, it's just a matter of learning it and using it more. Maybe you'll find a better way than what these other DAWs have to offer for that particular task. Next question comes from Vicky Voiceover. It looks like the only way to add metadata to a file is through the Media Explorer. Did I understand correctly? Tagging a file in a Media Explorer database is only for internal use. It only helps you search within the database inside Reaper. You can't use those tags elsewhere and they don't get added to the actual file. It's just within the database. If you want to tag files and keep them on the actual file, I recommend BWF Meta Edit. It's a free program used for tagging broadcast wave files. It's ugly but it does what it says it does. It's a good program to have if you ever do um, sample libraries or things like that. If you want to tag an MP3, that can only be done through an external program. I use a program called KID3 or KID3. I use that for tagging my podcast, the mastering show. Again, it's something that's really ugly to look at, but it works really well. And I think that's cross-platform as well. And I don't know, maybe at some point we'll get the option to commit database tags to WAV files. That'd be really cool, but we don't have it yet. So in the meantime, use those other programs. Last question comes from Cornelis. What's your thoughts on the Reaper SWS and do you use it? Yeah, the SWS extension is, I think it's essential. I recommend it for everyone because it fills in so many of the gaps in Reaper's features. Um, there are some overlapping features uh, now, but back in the day, 
you know, a couple of years ago, it was the only way to do certain things. At the very least, install it so that you have more control over what happens inside your custom actions. There's so many features in there, it's kind of like, where do you even start listing them? I use the region playlist. I use the uh, loudness management tools for normalizing files. That's really, really great. I use the reposition selected items action quite a lot. There's, there's just so many features in the SWS extension. It's free, there's no reason not to get it. And if you find it useful, please donate. Tim, the original guy that started SWS, is back developing it actively, and he's doing a great job. He's fixed a ton of bugs in the past couple months. It's only gonna get better. Highly recommend installing that, as well as Repack, and I've talked about that in a bunch of different videos. Repack and the SWS extension is essential. And if you install it, but you don't actually use any of this stuff, it's not going to harm anything. It's it's not going to make Reaper less stable or anything like that. You will find a use for that stuff. I use it practically every day. And that's it for this round of Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons. Here's a list of the people that have supported me on Patreon over the past month. Once again, if you would like to help out with the Reaper blog, uh, you can sign up as a patron, patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. It's a monthly donation thing. It's really easy. Uh, and it really helps me out. You can also send a one-time donation through the tip jar on the website. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter and visit the Reaper blog for a lot more tips, tricks, and tutorials. See ya.